Good evening, everyone. I'm Kristen, and uh, I'm here with you this evening to share with you about something that's really been stirring in my heart. And I have some guests here with me today to share with you as well. So we have this beautiful event coming up uh, towards the end of the year. It's actually a New Year's type retreat called The Sound of Silence. And it's going to be a 21-day silent retreat, or a 7-day silent retreat, or a 14-day silent retreat. And it's going to be held at Our Living Miracles Monastery in Duchesne, Utah, which is this amazing backdrop for really dropping deeply into the stillness of the heart. So as this event is called The Sound of Silence, I wanted to introduce you to the three facilitators of this event. We're joined today by... Uh, Jackie Simpson, Suzanne Sullivan, and Michael Caruana, and I'm just really inspired to hear why it is they're wanting to put this retreat on, what it is that that they're really wanting to extend through this retreat. So um, I'm really just pleased to be able to extend this to you all because this is what my heart is hungry for. So um, welcome, Jackie, Suzanne, Michael. <laughs> Thank you for joining Thank me you. tonight. Hi, Hi Kristen. Hi. Hi, Kristen. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So, this silent retreat is a bit different than our normal retreats that are held just within the Living Miracles community. We've usually got a really strong flavor coming through of A Course in Miracles, which is the pathway that I subscribe to. And now, for this retreat, we're actually just blowing it wide open. And I'd like to know from you guys, what it is that actually sets this retreat apart? Like, why would you not go to a Vipassana instead or something like that? What is it that's so profound about this retreat? Hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. That's a great question. Hmm. Um, well, I've actually done Vipassana retreat and um, I think just from the heart of things, and I I think I speak for all of us, but uh, I'm sure we'll have the chance to hear from all of us about what our inspiration is. But for me, silence, uh, it's not a concept. It's not just keeping your mouth closed and not talking. Um, that certainly is helpful and part of it. But to be able to uh, be in a space where you can literally have no distractions and that the whole thing is set up, for you to be welcomed into into a heart space like you said to get in touch with that call of your heart or that true connection with god or whatever you want to call it spirit higher power buddha it doesn't really matter what you're coming into here is this amazing place that's been used for many many years for healing and so there's there's a vibe already here for this kind of work and some people have a fantasy about silence. They think, oh, that sounds great. But, you know, wherever you go, there you are. And so it's a very deep healing uh, when, you, when you have a sustained period in silence uh, because your mind is no longer distracted by the things of the world. This place is completely set up for you to be able to let go. And we encourage people before they come, there are some guidelines that they have to follow while they're here. And so we have them take care of all their things before they come so that they can literally drop into something perhaps that they've never experienced before. And for myself, I was on a spiritual seeking journey for many, many, many years, like a lot of us. And that's all very, very helpful. But I do believe that silence uh, and having the time in prayer and deep inner contemplation and just being is a gateway into this deeper connection with the light within your own mind and it's precious and even the seeking journey or the spiritual journey if you have a particular spiritual path sometimes we have to even let go of that and just really stop focusing on the teaching so much and i think that that's the difference with this retreat and the reason that we've opened it up to all traditions or no traditions, uh, if you just feel like you want to come and deeply rest your mind, is because where we're all headed is the same place. And so in this inner contemplation and this inner feeling of sinking 
into yourself, something is revealed. And so it's not about receiving teachings coming at you. Uh, the, the space and the people that live here are a demonstration of that stillness. Um, that's the practice here. That's what the dedication is here. And so for me, the inspiration is that it's been so beneficial to me to be able to finally tune in. And it doesn't mean that you have to come to a retreat. You can do it in, the, in your own home. But when you come to a place like this, where the whole intention underneath it is to support you. And that's really what we're doing is we're supporting the silence with our own minds. And we're joining with you in this, you know, uh, New Year's, um, bringing in the New Year in a completely different way and reverence and quiet mind and just seeing what might emerge for you. Um, it's quite profound, actually. And this isn't the first time we've done something like this. We've done month-long silent retreats here before, mm. usually in the winter because it feels like a real time of dropping inward. And and so it just feels like uh, a heartfelt um, experience. And so, you know, to strengthen that, we just want to extend that to others and to have it be, you know, just this beautiful... I don't know, place of, of rest and to give over our, our hearts and minds to join with you in that way. So, um, you know, you say, how we're the facilitators of this retreat. Well, how do you facilitate a silent retreat? You know, um, well, we facilitate it through our own beingness. We facilitate it through our own love for those who come and, and we honor that it is a journey when you go, when you drop inward, things might come up and things and and this, these things will be supported we're not we're not just going to say you know you're off on your own you certainly can be if that's your calling but mm -hmm. that's my inspiration my inspiration is just to extend love in this way mm -hmm. and to really um, i don't know there's just a real feeling of namaste to people that come mm -hmm. here for silence there's a maturity there there's there's a depth there that is wanting that heart connection with our source whatever and however that looks to you so that's that's kind of my feeling about it <laughs> so it feels very deep and profound and mm. i'm very grateful for this space myself and so to be able to extend it to others just feels very natural and very beautiful yeah it does and what appeals to me about this is that it's not so structured uh, like of a personal retreat, which is mm. what you were asking. Um, there is a, a very light structure of three meals a day, uh, uh, optional meditations, morning, sometimes evenings. It will flow with what the spirit gives. And so we can't e even mm. say what the structure will look like other than there'll be three meals a day. Um, but, yeah. the, but the spirit will give what's, what's required by those who come. And that was what we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. We feel that we are in the silence. Everyone tunes in. It's one mind mm -hmm. in one purpose of complete rest in the self. And when something other than that arises, like the, the darkness which will arise um, because that's the whole purpose of actually allowing that to come, to let it pass through, to actually mm. sink into the light and the truth of self. Mm. Mm. And so that, that purpose when it's shared actually guides the way and that's what we will follow. Mm -hmm. So there will be a light structure and there will be some, some sessions and meditations offered, but they will be optional. So if people mm -hmm. choose to come and choose to be just in, in silence on their own, take walks around the property and all across to the cliff, that's absolutely encouraged mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I think that it's important to say that this is not a meditation retreat like you were referring to Vipassana. Mm. Um, this is just an open space. And when I think of the word silence, I actually think of, of presence. It's like getting in touch with the presence within. And so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's not about sitting mm -hmm. for hours in a meditation in a formal way. And the facilitation is supporting, like, like Jackie's talking about, it's mm -hmm. supporting 
uh, in the moment what is needed. There could be candlelight meditation, group meditation in the chapel. There could be a gong meditation. There could be uh, some counseling that's needed. There could be a group session if it's needed. Mm. So we're really just, uh, you know, we were we were joining earlier and it was like, well, we really can't tell you what the plan is because <laughs> it's going to be what you bring. And what you bring, then that will be responded to with the presence that, that resides here. So, um, yeah, it's not about, you know, hours and hours of meditation. If your practice is Vipassana, then yes, this is a beautiful space to come and practice for hours and hours of Vipassana mm -hmm. meditation. So um, it's whatever you bring, and then the spirit will respond to that, whatever mm -hmm. is needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like it's highly personalized, if you like. it's Each path is different for everybody, and it's totally honored, whatever your path is. And it's highly individualized for each individual. So. That's why we, we love to offer the retreats like this. And this retreat particularly just feels like it's really going to be led by you. So, hmm. um, And the backdrop here is amazing. Um, if you haven't seen the monastery, um, I'm sure Kristen will give you uh, the website for the monastery and even the, maybe the Facebook page. But just the backdrop here is incredible. Uh, hmm. It's on a beautiful canyon. We're right on the edge of the canyon here. And it will be like the middle of winter. We'll, we'll hmm. be snowed in. We, we can easily Maybe. get in there. Maybe. We, <laughs> we can't plan that either, but <laughs> well, we'll have possibility, plenty. yes. <laughs> right. But it'll be, it'll be cold, but that's going to be cozy. It just feels yeah. like that inward journey. Like yeah, we'll saying. have the fires so, burning. We'll yeah, fires you know, burning. Just, it's just that call to go inward, you know, just to leave the distractions of the world behind. Some of the craziness of New Year's Eve <laughs> and that sort <laughs> of thing. A new way to do New Year's. <laughs> and oftentimes we're compromising around New Year's Eve yeah. with family and friends, you know. Oh, not another New Year's Eve. What are we going to do? Right. <laughs> so this is a beautiful gift, really, for you, really, for your family and friends and the whole universe to be able to go inward like that. It is a beautiful uh, way to, you can radiate the love and the peace and the joy mm. from your heart, uh, which is very, very precious. It's, it's no small gift, this, mm. this peace that's available. Mm -hmm. And we're here because this is what we want. <laughs> it's like you say, facilita we spend facilitating <laughs> sounds like a funny thing because we'll be doing it. We'll be there with you and uh, we'll certainly be there as a as a gentle cradle for you. If, uh, yeah. if anything is coming up for you, we, we've done a lot of this stuff about <laughs> with letting stuff pass through. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for healing uh, if that comes up for you or just a really beautiful time just to rest in peace rest in rest. the arms of god or allah or <laughs> buddha or whoever you would like to rest in the arms of if whoever you're you know whoever is that security blanket for you if you like mm. that's mm. going to be available for you here and we really encourage it like i said we'll be sinking in with you yeah and uh, it's just a precious time and um you know a week two weeks three weeks around the beginning of the year may seem like it's difficult to do and you really I think it's a really good opportunity to ask yourself, well, what are my priorities in life? Mm. What do I want? Do I actually really want awakening? Do mm. I want peace of mind? You know, it doesn't have to be awakening. It doesn't have to be peace of mind. But what about a step back, a battery recharge? Mm. <laughs> this mm. is a, a wonderful mm. opportunity and a great place to do that. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, there's something beautiful that happens in the mind and the heart when the distractions are taken away. And it's a it's a process, you know. That's why we've done we've chosen one week, two week, three weeks, and everybody has to start at the same date on the New Year's Eve. So, but there's a there's a purpose and there's a reason for that because mm -hmm. there's a process that happens mm -hmm. because you come out of the world, you come to this place that you know it's just like being on another planet, really, mm -hmm. and so everything is new and different, and it takes the mind time to settle down. Mm -hmm settles down settles down and we've done month-long silent retreats here when at the end of it nobody really wanted to speak anymore because they were in such a deep experience of who they are you know and that there's nothing better than that and and think about it i mean how long have you ever spent in silence i mean really uh, people that come to these retreats some people have never spent a day in silence mm. and so support is needed for that and uh, but it's so so like Michael was saying, it's so precious to be able to to get to know yourself, to be with yourself, to just sit on the cliff and stare for a couple of hours, and and it, and it looks like 
there's nothing going on, but everything is going on. Mm -hmm. There's a deep call for connection. And there's a deep, deep call for that resonance with something that is going to kind of emerge within you that says that you truly are carried, that you truly are loved, that, that, that you truly can be peaceful, no matter what seems to be happening on the screen. And it's just, you know, it's like the, 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 the click of the button with everything on YouTube and all the teachings that, you know, it's like addicts to spirituality. Mm -hmm. And without this aspect, and this is what I'm, I mm -hmm. realized for myself, because I was one of those that was consuming everything I could read and every teacher. And when the prayer of the heart really got activated and I started really sinking in, then it was a game changer. Everything changed. Mm -hmm. I started to actually feel connected. I, you know, it's like um, it was like an anchor to something that was real, and 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 it was it was just absolutely essential for my turning a corner. Actually, it wasn't any more about going to retreats and, and 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 studying long hours. It was just it was just like be alone. Try that. Try that see what it feels like and i feel like you know david hoffmeister always says that the fast track to awakening is silence mm. and relationship so how about being silently in relationship with yourself <laughs> but <laughs> who knows what might happen but uh it's deep it's profound it's not just like uh, and you might have to hit boredom you might have to hit a lot of things but of course, it's like almost like a detox for the mind for New Year's, right? Yeah. You know, like, so, like yeah. you know, people do all this stuff for New Year's Eve and they have all these intentions. How about an intention to know thyself? Mm -hmm. it, wouldn't that be beautiful to, to give yourself that gift? Like just, mm -hmm. wow, you know, maybe you haven't even considered doing something like this. But I can tell you from my own experience that this is a profound and deep journey into that silence and stillness that, and then you take away what you take away is that stillness. You really do. You take it with you. So uh, it's not, a, you know, like I said, it's nurturing to be in a space like this. Yeah. And to cultivate that is, is very, it's, it's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I get a little excited about silence. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's kind of where my heart has been with this, too, where I come from a background of many busy doings. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. The question that just kept rising in my mind as, as this retreat has come closer and closer is just what happens to the mind with seven mm. days of silence or 14 days of silence or 21 days of silence. And I feel like you've just covered that so beautifully, like with the slowdown, where it's like you turn a fan off. You know, the fan is, you know, whirring, 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 and it's like you turn it off and then it takes some time to settle and stop. And then, and then, and then something else emerges. And um, yeah, I feel like I had an experience just recently with you, Suzanne, actually, where we had a very brief encounter. It was like 10 minutes long. And you just said to me, you're like, what if you just stopped for a while? Like spend 30 minutes doing nothing with no agenda, with no agenda for a change, not trying to get something done or anything like that. Um, and it was profound, yeah. actually. I noticed a difference absolutely immediately. I noticed a difference on day one because it was there was something beyond yeah. And every that. spiritual it's tradition, that. every spiritual tradition leads you into silence. That's, a, you know, inner contemplation. Mm -hmm. There's not one that just says, read these words and awaken. It's like there's inner work to be done. Mm -hmm. And there's many, many ways to do that. And we, we practice in this community ma many different ways. But that's it. Just take 30 minutes. And if you don't even come to this treat, retreat, please give yourself the gift of, of pausing and stepping out for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. It makes all the difference. Really mm. does. <laughs> yeah, the other thing in my mind is with the monastery. My first experience with the monastery, first of all, it's way out in a canyon in Utah. And as Michael was sharing, just the most gorgeous backdrop you could imagine for, for really dropping deeply. It's like this cradle. And so you, you take a windy road, maybe 10 minutes off the main road or 20 minutes off the main road and I can just remember rounding the last corner and having this word enter my mind home and of course it's not about mm -hmm. the location but there was some deep recognition there of oh this is a place I can rest this is a place where mm -hmm. I really can let it all go leave it all behind at least for the time that I'm here and you know it'll be waiting for you if, if you even desire to pick it back up 
But um, yeah, I just wondered if maybe you had anything more to share about the monastery, because I can't imagine a more nurturing place for this kind of thing. I think what you said is really the essence of it. It's mm -hmm. a, we call it home because that feeling when we, when we mm -hmm. walk in here is coming home to the self. Mm -hmm. And you can feel that this is a place where you can do that because the spaciousness is here. And mm -hmm. particularly when it's set up in terms of a, a retreat like this, it's supported so very well too, to actually come to that place over that, that period of time during the retreat to, to really come home mm -hmm. to the self. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no agenda. Yeah. There, right. there's, there's zero agenda here, mm -hmm. except for love and support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, what a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And for us to be able to be in that too, and just yeah. like, just to float with that and to be in that, you know, and that's the monastery. We hear that quite often mm -hmm. when people get out of the car. In fact, that's how I felt when I first came here to this land. I was like, wow, there's something here. It was, it was like I was so out of touch. Mm -hmm. But when I stepped out of the car, I was like, so I could feel literally this energy of silence. Mm -hmm. And uh, I never really looked back after that. It's like it <laughs> got a hold of me. So <laughs> It's like the drive in through the canyon, that 20, 25 minutes. It's like the inward journey into the mind, isn't yeah, it? It's just it sinking is. deeper and deeper in. And you can feel there's like a reverence that starts coming in. As you, oftentimes, you, generally yeah. we're silent when we drive yeah, yeah. in. If anyone yeah. wants to be talking, yeah, yeah. When, when we get off the main road, we say, uh, yeah, it's very hard to talk now. <laughs> like we just, it's time to yeah, because in. you come in and from just, Salt Lake City Airport. Right. Then you go through Salt Lake City. Then you go through little towns. Then you start to approach the canyon. Then you leave dirt. You leave. I mean, you leave pavement. And yeah. You come onto the dirt. And it's like eight or nine miles down a dirt road. Yeah. So it is. It's like that. Just You're just like coming yeah. in deeper and deeper. And we really mm. honor the... As soon as we see the cliffs, we mm. say, okay, everybody be quiet now. Because... Mm. Just the drive in mm. is such a treat to the mind. Yeah. It's mm. like it is that, and you're so on these solid rock cliffs mm. on both sides. You feel, yeah, just like, wow, where am I going? It's very mystical. The way in feels very nurturing, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. It's yeah. just beautiful. Mm. So we love the monastery. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just thinking too, I mean, some people say, well, a week of silence or two weeks or three mm. weeks of silence is a lot. And what about this place and what have you? And just that like we have these personal retreat stays people can come for a couple of days that's really available even before then if you want to try it out mm -hmm. um so yeah. yeah just to see what the monastery is about and just to start experiencing some a day or two mm -hmm. of silence to see how it feels you'd be very welcome for that too so. yeah for this particular experience um for the, the uh, a longer immersion we really felt because we thought well maybe just a few days and then whoever it was like no we just really felt guided mm -hmm. that it's one week two weeks or three weeks mm -hmm. and and it's such a gift mm -hmm. it's such an extraordinary gift mm. yeah so i understand actually on the back end of this retreat you've got another workshop so this retreat is open as you said, Suzanne, all denominations and no denominations. And on the back end of it, you have a two-day, more focused workshop, which probably will include the teachings, and it will be based in A Course in Miracles. So what, what can you tell us about that? Hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, we're known. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, based on A Course in Miracles. That's been our given path. And the, the monastery is the only A Course in Miracles monastery in the world where... There's lots of teachings and retreats and things that go on here. Um, so, yeah, we just felt like at the end of this retreat, depending on who shows up, that we want to give that opportunity. People maybe who've never even really known much about the Course of Miracles could stay on. But we felt like after such a deep experience of silence and whatever practice, uh, if, it's a, if it's the Course lessons or whatever, um, that a retreat, uh, A Course in Miracles retreat, would be a beautiful thing to spend some time because, you know, not everybody has the opportunity to come to the monastery and, and we are known for A Course in Miracles and it is, mm -hmm. we love to extend it. So we thought A Course in Miracles retreat at the end seemed very appropriate. I think the other part too, it is it is the non-dual teachings of A Course in Miracles. It is pu mm -hmm. a pure non-dual path and I think there's a lot of confusion around that. So, and I know there's a lot of interest around it, but this is an, an opportunity for those that 
aren't actually into the course but have have been interested in knowing more and more about it, mm-hmm. this would be a wonderful time to come for these two days and just learn and really immerse in it with us. And, mm-hmm. you know, if there's any doubt that it's non-dual, and especially mm-hmm. if you're a non-dual into the non-dual path, this is this will become very clear how mm-hmm. this is non-dual. It has, it was, it did come through and with Christian mm-hmm. languaging. It was simply to, to touch those that mm-hmm. sort of brought up as Christians, but it's, it's non-dual. It's mm-hmm. not... Uh, you it's know, very practical, and that, that's where it gets confusing, I think, because of the languaging. But don't get don't get stuck there, you know. Yeah. Don't get stuck on the surface on the words, because it's leading to a very, very deep place. It's a, it's an amazingly deep path, and yeah, we just welcome you if you want to join in. And that's at the the end of the retreat on the between the twenty first and the twenty third of uh, January. Is that mm-hmm. right, uh, Kristen? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And for yeah. those those who want to stay on and feel that they would like a time of debriefing where they can mm. actually talk and, and communicate with each other too, I feel is very valuable mm-hmm. that, uh, because you're with these same people for 21 days mm-hmm. and now you actually get to share some experiences, to talk oh, with yeah. them to, to, and to express uh, mm. how it's been for you and which can also come into the, the teachings. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, anything that, that arises, the spirit will guide the answer. Yeah. And, and that's required. Yeah. Mm. There's such a beautiful experience of relationship that happens mm. without the words. Mm. And then the words, and the, but then at the end, it's like it's, it's nice to, mm. and we probably will have something at the very end where we all share and stuff, but to yeah. be able to spend a couple days... And just really kind of, it's kind of like uh, re-entry in a way. Start speaking purposefully Mm. and and joining and then then going back home. That's Mm. so beautiful that you say that because you're going to need a re-entry after after this kind of period (laughs) in silence. You know, it's it's not, as you said, Suzanne, it's not silence with the words. It's a silence in the heart. And so how do you go back to something else and I guess the answer is you're forever changed by this kind of experience so it really is a life-changing experience as I shared with you I think 30 minutes changed my my whole outlook on things so yeah yeah it feels like anybody that's really feeling a tickle in their heart is really in for something very magnificent Mm Well, I find myself running out of questions and just dropping into this experience with you all. But before, <laughs> if there's anything else, any of you feel inspired to share, just a, a you know a particular inspiration or or any other words, then just want to invite you to do that. Well, I like what you just said about life changing. I really know that that's true. That time with yourself like this in this kind of setting is life changing. That's what I would like to to share. That it's not. There's nothing about it that isn't transformational. Well, perhaps now as we're running out of words, we can just all drop in together and enjoy this moment with one another and ourselves and really get a taste of what this is. We're going to give you a little, uh, we'll drop into silence, but we're going to give you a little welcome to the monastery gong. Okay, we'll see if...
Thank you, Kristen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys, uh, down in Mexico. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, you're all welcome. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Yeah, so as they mentioned, we'll be sending out some more information in the video that you're seeing on your screen. And yeah, it's just with, with a deep joy that I invite you into this. And um, yeah. There are no See words. You in December. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a happy, happy new year. <laughs> Inner happiness. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>